Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day. It will brighten all the way if you keep on the sunny side of life. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. We are one in the bond of love. We are one in the bond of love. We have joined our spirits with the Spirit of the Lord. We are one in the bond of love. There was a few songs to remind us of how we're to live in this culture very differently than what is the go-it-alone culture that we have. I want to talk to you a little bit about that tendency that we have to go it alone, going it alone in life. You know, we try to do this. Well, we're kind of, um, maybe in not all a bad way, to try and learn to take responsibility for ourselves. That's one mm -hmm. level of maturity. But then he says, don't just take responsibility for yourself, but also for the, uh, look out for the interests of others. We try. And we really want to go, to go it alone if we can. Sometimes we're ashamed, especially in this culture. We feel bad when we don't, when we, we, when we're needy, when we're struggling, when we're not at the top of our game. We, we want to be needed, not just needy or, if possible, never needy. As a matter of fact, we live in a culture right now, the religious culture, where we want Jesus. We're told that we can have Jesus as our personal Savior. Sadly, it seems to come across, it's almost like getting your own personal pizza. You know, a personal size pizza, just enough for me. And if you want one, you can get your own too, but no thought of a family size pizza to enjoy with others. Well, probably we'd all have to kick in for that. And occasionally we'll do this for special events, but as a regular way of life, living a way of life, a way of doing life together, we are less likely to choose that than ever. And the reason is, is because going it alone is simpler. It's less messy. It's less stressful sometimes. But here's the sad thing. It's also less Christian, not really Christian at all. And it is true that it, while we, it is true that we have our personal relationship with Jesus, our growth and our apprenticeship and discipleship following him is done with others. There's no other way. Jesus called disciples, not disciple. He formed a family, a, a koinonia, a community, not a website. He gave us one another commands, many dozens of them, that can't be practiced alone. Uh, they can't be practiced without a flesh and blood a community oftentimes made up of people of various maturity levels and weirdness, <laughs> weaknesses and strengths. And not only is going it alone bad for your development, for your soul, for your growth, it's also bad for your physical health. Some of you probably read this week that the, the um, Surgeon General came out 
talking again about this loneliness epidemic that has been true um, even it, it got worse even during the pandemic. The loneliness epidemic is hitting young people, especially ages 15 to 24, especially hard. And this is both before and after the pandemic, but the pandemic did make it worse. The age group reported a 70% drop in time spent with friends during the same period. Uh, loneliness increases your chance of premature death, death by nearly 30%, is what the Surgeon General said, with a report revealing that those with poor social relationships have a greater risk of stroke, heart disease. Isolation also elevates a person's likelihood of experiencing depression, anxiety, dementia. According to the research, uh, Murthy did not provide any data, uh, but he said that uh, people are, die directly from loneliness and isolation on some level. And, of course, the Surgeon General, he's responsible to, like, he, he basically laid out a framework to tackle loneliness and what he said, mend the social fabric of our nation. I don't think that's something that the government is particularly good at. He said that this epidemic of loneliness and isolation is affecting the country in a big way. And he said um, that uh, reality is part of the report. It's an 88 page report. It says that isolation and loneliness is worse for your health than smoking 19 cigarettes a day. Now, I'm just going to say that doesn't mean some of you need to go out and start puffing again, um, um, you know, or more. Uh, it's just saying that it's not good for us. Um, you know, just to add here, I'm not trying to stress you, but just to add to it, it is linked to sleep problems, inflammation, immune changes in younger adults. In older people, they're, uh, they're tied to symptoms of such as pain, insomnia, depression, anxiety, shorter lifespan. In people of all ages, it, that I, loneliness may be associated with higher risk of heart disease, stroke, diabetes, addiction, suicidal, and self-harm and dementia. Um, but social connections can help. And uh, he was just saying uh, that we need to work at this as, uh, as people. If you feel lonely, you have to do something about it and uh, not just wait for somebody else to do it. And I know that that's hard because sometimes when you feel isolated, you think, where does, how come nobody calls? Um, so I just want to say we need to rely on each other more, they're saying. Isn't it something that this is the church's message? This is the message of the gospel. This is why we have this thing called community or koinonia. Jesus called us to be part of. Um, you know, uh, so I just want to say a couple things for you this week. Um, how about some practices for this week? How about number one, basic practice, gathering with your church in person this week. I know for some of you that watch this online, it's really hard to do. You live out of the area or you live, you don't, you're not connected with the church yet, but gathering with your church or a church, if you can't be close this week, you know, the Bible tells us explicitly in Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering for he who has promised is faithful. He's saying, don't, don't slide back. Don't backslide. Don't lose ground, don't waver, don't fail, don't, 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 don't become unstable, wavering. And how did he say to do it? Well, he said it involves all of us. Let us, it means you and me, consider, we think about it ahead of time, how to stimulate or how to encourage one another to love and good deeds. How do you think about it? How can I do, what can I do to help them do better in their loving and in their good deeds? And then he says, here's one way you do it. Here's the big way. Not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. Now, let me just be honest with you. Some of you that are watching this, you've been forsaking that assembling together, get gathering uh, with us, or uh, even if you're able, even if you could, Maybe you've just gotten out of the habit through, and it is true that people are struggling with this because, you know, someone told me the other day they came, when they came on one service, it was full, you know, it was pretty, pretty full and they felt uncomfortable. We had all the seats in there and they were uncomfortable with that because they've kind of 
the, what they've been going through over these last few years. It, they used to say if a build, if a room was 80% full, people felt uncomfortable and it would be kind of a, they back off. Um, now I'd say it's more down to like 65, 70% uh, for whatever reason. It's a cultural thing. But you not forsake. You got to push through it. Not forsaking our own assembling together. It gets to be a habit. You're doing other things. You're doing sports. You're doing your yard or whatever. It's a habit. And this is a habit that you need to get back into if you're going to not waver, if you're not going to, um, and you're going to help other people to not waver and become unstable. But encouraging one another, that means giving courage to one another <clears throat> all the more as you see the day drawing near. You know, sometimes it's being with each other is encouraging. You don't have to say anything brilliant. Just being with each other. So the second thing is you could do, second practice I want you to do this week. So I want to see you on Sunday. If there's any way you can be there, you have to make it a priority. It's a practice. It's like anything else you practice. So um, 8 o'clock, 11 o'clock service, be there for that. Be, uh, be uh, looking for ways. Pray about it before you come. Consider how you can stimulate others. And then call someone this week. Call them. Just call one person. Just no agenda. Just check on them. Be that one person that called to check on them. And then here's one. Have a meal with someone. You know, this is a big part of our Christian faith is to break bread together. Just sit down, have some soup or have breakfast or whatever. Um, just make a point. Put it on your list. I'm going to have a meal with someone this week. We're going to say grace together. Um and we're going to just eat together and have a conversation. Have a meal with someone. Break bread. No phones. <laughs> hey, you know, Sunday, you can get two out of three of those practices done just by coming to my breakfast class at 9.30. We're talking about community. 9.30 in the morning, you get breakfast, you get to hang out with some people for a while, and then we have a class and teaching time and some sharing time. So I'm um, looking forward to... Um, seeing you. I'd like to see you. It encourages me too. God bless you. And thanks for watching this. And, and not because I'm interested in, um, I just want people to hear this message. So you know people that need to hear this, maybe send this on to them. Okay. God bless you.